one. We're now in our next video in number theory, and we're still in our chapter in the theory of congruences. And here, we're going to briefly discuss what do we mean when we say um, the two numbers, the two integers, are incongru incongruent with respect to modulo n. So when n is not divisible, you remember the symbol, right? Um, when n is not divisible by a minus b, or by the difference of a minus b, we say that a is incongruent to b modulo n, or with respect to the modulo n. And in this case, we write it as this. So this is our notation. Okay? So a is incongruent to b modulo n. A is incongruent to b modulo n. So we write it this way. So we just have the, the congruence symbol and cross it. Just like when we say that um, the two numbers are um, not equal. Okay? Now let's have some examples here. Very simple examples. So um, we can say that 25 is incongruent to 12 modulo 7 because 25 minus 12 is equal to, we know, 13. And 7 is not a factor of 13. Or 7 is not um, uh, divisible by 13. Okay, it's not a factor. 7 is not a factor of 13. Okay, so you can see here that um, the n is not divisible by the difference of a minus b, so therefore we say that it's incongruent. Okay, so let's have more examples of it, and maybe we can go back to the congruence uh, so that we can say or we can have some review first. So 23 is said to be congruent to 3 mod 5, so let's, let's check on that. Is this true? Um, let's say because. Um, let's try 23 minus 3. Okay, 23 minus 3 is clearly equal to 20. Is equal to 20. Okay, and we can see the 20, okay, is equal to 4 times 5. Okay, so in short, we can say that um, 5 is divisible by 20. Okay, 5 is divisible by 20. Um, okay, so we can see that there's 5 here. So, Or we can put it in this way, that uh, 5 is a factor of 20. Five is a factor of twenty. Okay, so which makes it correct? How about here? Forty-eight is congruent to twelve modulo six. So we say because um, forty-eight minus twelve is equal to what's forty-eight minus twelve, anyways. So that's uh, thirty-six, and thirty-six is equal to 6 times 6, that's 6 squared. So that's clearly 6 times 6. Or we can simply say, we can write it um, or, we can say that 6 is divisible by 36. Okay? Or 6 divides 36. Or uh, 6 is a factor of 36. Okay? Next up, we will have um, 28 congruent, is congruent to negative 4, mod 16. So why is that true? Okay, why is that true? Uh, because we can have uh, 28, 28 uh, minus negative 4, so that's about double negative. This is going to give us uh, what number? Uh, 28 minus minus 4, that's 28 plus 4, is going to give us 32. And 32 is 2 times 16. Or again, we can simply say that um, 16 divides 32, or 16 is a factor of 32. Okay, so we can see that in all of these examples, that um, the two integers a and b, 23 and 3 in this in this part, 48 and 12 in here, and 28 and negative 4 in here, are all um, congruent with respect to their modulo. But let's try to um, see this as an example that um, 20 is not congruent to 3 mod 4. So why is that so? Um, that is because 20 
minus 3 is equal to 17. So by the answer, by the first answer, we can see that 17 is a prime number. So you know the, the, the properties of prime numbers, right? So 17, okay, um, there's no factor of 4, okay? 4 is not a factor of 17. Okay, because 17 is clearly a prime number, so so we cannot have um, 4 as one of its factors. So therefore, it is not congruent. It is not congruent. Uh, rather, it's not divisible, and also it follows that it is not congruent. Okay? Um, so that's it for the incongruence. We just use the, the, the cross in the congruence symbol. So let's move and... Take a look at this note. Maybe we can say that this is a remark of some sort. And okay, here it is. Okay, so note any two integers are congruent congruent modulo one. So all the integers are congruent modulo one. So for instance, um, think of any number negative three is congruent to two mod one. Okay, why is that so? Because um, any number, imagine any number, negative 3, for example, in this case, minus 2 is equal to minus 5. And we know that 1 is um, a trivial factor of any numbers. So therefore, this is equal to 1 times negative 5. So in short, we can say that um, 1 is a factor of negative 5, which is very trivial. So therefore, since 1 is um, is an identity element, Okay, in multiplication. So it's it's understood that all integers, any two integers, is congruent to modulo one. Okay, whereas two integers are congruent to modulo two if they are both even or both odd. So as an example, say we have um, four is congruent to um, twelve mod two. Uh, why is that so? Because 4 minus 12 is going to give us what? Uh, minus 8, which is equal to um, minus 4 times 2. So in so we say that 2 is a factor of of um, or we can say that 2 is a factor of minus 8. So um, therefore it, they are congruent. 4 and 12 are congruent. Okay, uh, 4 and 12 are congruent. Whereas if we're going to think also, this follows in odd numbers. You, you can check it check it out yourself. It follows that um, if mod 2, if they are, if they're not, if they're not both even or both odd. So we say that, uh, for example, a minus 5 is incongruent to 2, mod 2. Um, to give you a proof, because minus 5 minus 2 is going to give us, let me fit it, uh, minus 7, wherein minus 7 is not a fact, there's no factor of 7, because since 7 is a prime number, of 2. So therefore we say, um, therefore, we say that 2 does not divide minus 7, or it's not a factor of minus 7. So therefore, in short, they are incongruent. Okay, so you can see that any, again, just to reinforce, any two integers are congruent modulo 1. So in as much as congruent modulo 1 is particularly, it's not particularly interesting. Okay, so we can see here from our, sorry. Okay, um, we can see here from our example that um, mod 1 is a trivial modulo for any numbers, for all pairs of numbers. So therefore, um, we can say that modulo one is not particularly interesting um, to talk about, right? So it's it's like it's like a, a an automatic modulo or automatic yeah automatic modulo for any pair of numbers that they are they are all they are both both mod one so it's automatic. So in as much as modulo one is um, not interesting, the usual practice is to assume that n our congruence modulo is always greater than one because uh, you know as as we have shown one is kind of boring. Okay, to, to, to do with the, with the modulo. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, we just have um, 
more exercises in the theory of congruences in modular arithmetic if you want or clock arithmetic and we have um, talked about incongruence and the notation and also um, about the congruence module one that all pairs of numbers are congruence module one and also the congruence module two is only true if they are both even or both odd okay so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i hope that you would like and subscribe okay thank you and see you